Hey, what's up guys? It's James Diamond here. Welcome back to another FL Studio 11 tech tip here on Sonic Academy. In this episode, we're going to be looking at using the Fruity Panomatic and using that on reverse leads. It's this little plugin here. I think it's kind of a overlooked plugin within the FL Studio arsenal. It's absolutely great. It does basically does what it says on the tin. It pans stuff and it does it automatically. So rather than you having to draw in any kind of panning automation manually, this can do it for you. It's a really, really interesting tool and I've used it on a lot of tracks. I've rendered out my remix of A Star and a Star by Mark Sherry and we're going to be listening for the way that the Panomatic is able to automatically pan the main reverse lead which comes in at this section here just before the main lead comes in itself. It's quite a common technique used in a lot of kind of electronic dance tracks. So we'll give the uh, example render a play and listen out for this small section here and then we'll jump into the video. So as you can hear, the reverse lead, it kind of started off on the left-hand side then quickly went to the right. And as the sound got a bit louder and it went on, the panning was kind of quickening up. It was going quicker to the left, then quicker to the right. And it got that real kind of helicopter sound in the left and right sides of the speakers. So I'll just mute the example render and then I've rendered out the stems individually. And we'll have a look at how to exactly do this effect. So I've linked all three of my audio clips here to different mixers, mixer channels, and I've added on the Panomatic onto the reverse lead, which is this one here. So first things first, I'm going to do a volume automation as it will sound pretty loud when it comes in on its own. So I want the volume to kind of smoothly come up. And then I've got the Panomatic on already. And in order to create this kind of helicopter sound, there's a couple of things that we need to do. I'm just going to make space for some automation. First things first, uh, we need to turn the pan on. By default, the LFO section is set to off. We need to change it to pan. You can also use it for volume, which is quite nice as well. But in this video, we're going to be looking at pan. Then you've got your different choice of oscillators. This is basically going to change the shape of the panning based on an oscillator shape. So we're going to click on the second one down. And then we've got these two toggles here. The first one is amount and the second one is speed. Amount changes, as it says, the amount of the kind of panning that you hear. And the speed changes the speed of the panning that you hear. So we're going to create two automation clips for both of these. For the time being, I'm going to set the amount to 100%, and then keeping the speed at 50, I'm then going to pull the final automation as we want it to speed up towards the end of the small clip there. I'm going to pull that to 100, and then I'm going to slightly pull up on the automation to increase the speed quicker than straight up like that. So let's have a listen to see how that sounds. So I think that sounds pretty nice. As you can tell, the as we've got the amount of um, panning at, set to 100% straight away, obviously that it's going to straight away start panning the sound. So you can also automate the amount that you hear. So actually the sound starts in the center and then it will start to move left and right using the amount. We can try playing around with the speed amount here. And as we've got this small kind of reverb tail at the end there, maybe we want to have the maximum amount of panning happening just before that. And then let's turn the 
speed back down to 50. To kind of set it back to default. And let's do the same for our amount. Let's pull that all the way back down because I don't want this, the reverb of the leads to have any kind of the, the helicopter sound on it. I want to keep that as standard. So let's have a listen. Because as you can hear, it's got that real kind of nice uh, tail of the reverb there. I don't want that to be moving left and right. So let's have a quick listen to see how that sounds with the rest of the track. So I'll unmute everything else. That's sounding pretty cool indeed. We're going to take it one final step further. And let's add on a filter. We're going to choose a high pass filter. And then we're just going to automate the cutoff. And it's just another way that we can increase the sound once again. Put a bit more movement on it. And we'll just bring out the low end towards the end of the clip. Maybe the reverb at the end is just a bit too much, so let's bring the automation back down. That sounded quite nice, so let's have a listen to how it sounds with the rest of the track. Sounded pretty cool. Let's listen one more time from a little bit earlier on. Very cool indeed. I really like that technique. Like I say, I've used it in a lot of my own tracks. And when you want to have these kind of big main leads, and just instead of doing just your standard kind of uh, reverse lead with nothing else on it, this adds a little bit extra movement and sounds really cool on your speakers and your headphones. So there we go. Nice and short video, but a very cool technique. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please... We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.